Well, I guess it's nap time for Scrappy. But for us, I think we need to do some painting. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Ryan Heron from Paintings by Night. And today, I want to show you all a very easy and effective way uh, to paint a western landscape in oils. Uh, for this painting, I'll be painting on, on cradled hard, hardboard. It's 12 by 12 inches. And I've primed this with about three layers of an acrylic gesso. Now, I get a lot of questions. Um, I paint on a variety of surfaces, canvas, um, MDF panel, cradled hardboard. But one of my favorite ways to paint is to prime hardboard, whether it's MDF, masonite panel, or cradled hardboard. And I like to, uh, to, to texture these, these surfaces. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, basically, for the first layers, the first two layers, I'll paint, I'll dip the brush in the gesso, and I'll paint over the board, let it dry, lightly sand it, paint another layer, sand that, and for the final layer, I dip my knife into the gesso and I put it on really thick, it, kind of like icing a cake. And when you do this with a knife and you're putting the gesso on really thick, you, uh, it, when it dries, it, you get these random like marks and textures and scratches in the surface. And uh, when you look at the painting when it's finished, when you look at the painting from a distance, you don't really notice these things. Um, it looks, you know, real. But when you look at it up close, you can see these cracks and textures. And uh, it's, um, to me, it's, it just gives it a really interesting effect. And that's one of my favorite ways, ways to paint. Um, so, uh but like I said, I, I use different methods, but this is usually my, my go-to method. Um, so I'll go ahead and tell you that a few of the colors that I use for this painting um, are titanium white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, viridian, it's like a bluish green color. Uh, I think I use some sap green, French ultramarine blue, and Elysian crimson. And I'm pretty much sure that's all I use for this painting. So uh, with all that being said, let's uh, get some coffee and, uh, and get rolling. studio and like I said I'm painting on a 12 by 12 inch cradled hardboard panel um, it's about three-fourths of an inch deep and before I started painting this I've actually toned the board um, a neutral color um, I don't always do this but in a lot of the paintings I do uh, for various reasons uh, generally for me anyway a lot of paintings don't look complete until every part of it is covered with paint and uh, without toning the canvas uh, any remaining white space can actually um, have an impact on the overall um, paintings impact so to tone or stain a, a canvas or panel before you begin, I normally use a mixture of burnt umber and titanium white. Um, you can also use pretty much any neutral color, um, I, depending on what you plan on painting. I've used uh, shades of um, you know light blue from French ultramarine blue and white, um, even darker colors, you know, from dark browns. But like I said, generally um, toning that canvas or panel 
allows the uh, the true colors to show through better in my opinion and you can get a better idea on um, what the colors actually look like if that makes any sense <laughs> um, it's just like the uh, the palette that I use um, on the table that I paint on I have a thick piece of glass over an old computer desk um, that I used to have my computer sitting on an old computer and the color of the desk is pretty much the same color as what you see on this panel right now it's like a light brown color so when mixing colors anytime you mix against a neutral background you can actually see the true value and and uh, the true color that you're mixing so um anyway uh, you know like i said a lot of paintings i work on um i will work on a tone canvas to help harmonize that final painting the only times when i don't tone a canvas or when i plan on using what i call the wipe away method and this is where i apply certain transparent colors to a white panel or canvas and then i'll use a soft cloth or paper towel to wipe away the transparent areas and it actually makes them uh, illuminate it makes them a lot brighter i often do this on paintings especially for skies um, like just above the horizon that i want to appear extremely bright and illuminate the rest of the landscape below um, so pretty soon i hope to make a video on this and show you exactly what i'm talking about um, so enough of that um, what I've done now is basically block in some some background shapes where the distant mountain range was um, using French ultramarine, French ultramarine blue and titanium white and a little bit of crimson to give it more of a purplish cast to it um, I've put in the sky area and by the way, this painting is not sped up in any way. Um, you probably noticed me painting the sky and it looked like you know, I was going 100 miles per hour. Uh, but uh, I tend to most times work better when I work faster. Um, it, I tend not to uh, hyper focus on detail, especially in the beginning. And uh, for me, it just works out better to paint fast, um, you know, block in the colors initially and, uh, and paint in thin layers, uh, especially a painting like this where the main rock formation is going to have a lot of detail. You, you don't want to start, you know, with a really thick coat of paint, um, as, uh, as a lot of you probably may already know, the, the fat over lean method means um, when you paint in layers like this um, you start off with you know the thin paints and work your way up to the thicker paints for for more detail especially in the foreground and, and the main focus of the painting which in this painting is the uh, the uh, rock formation that you see me working on now and um, right here I'm putting in a little bit of uh, uh, I'm actually just using various colors of uh, burnt sienna um, burnt umber and a little bit of, of blue for the shadow areas and here I'm just actually cleaning off my brush uh, basically um, and some of those colors are going to show through um, as I paint the grasses and the cactus or cacti I guess you would say in the uh, in the foreground um, so uh, like I said don't at this point don't try to think about detail or anything like that well I guess it's time for another nap We've painted long enough, haven't we, Scarlet? 
Scarlet. <laughs> I have to get back to painting, Scarlet. All right. I'll see so you as uh, Scarlet sleeps, we uh, will continue to uh, work on this piece here. And uh, I'm adding some some mixtures of uh, you know blue and crimson um, because, like I said earlier, some of these random colors will show through as, as shadow colors in the foreground and um, give it a sense of uh, depth and distance. Uh, speaking of depth, depth and distance, um, whenever painting a landscape painting, in my opinion, it's very essential that you're able to illustrate a visual sense of depth um, through your brush strokes or knife strokes colors and composition and there's several ways that you can achieve this and the first way is to paint with less detail definition and texture the further you go back into the landscape um, right here I'm sorry to I got off on a tangent there on a <laughs> depth and distance but right here I'm just painting some clouds um, using my palette knife and um, you can use a brush for this, but with, you know, clouds being non-symmetrical, I find that just painting really fast with a palette knife helps to uh, create more of a realistic cloud formation. So I'm just using a, a soft brush here to blend out the, the base of those clouds. But back, uh, while I continue to work on the the uh, rock formation here and add some highlights to it um, to, to make a landscape more realistic you know with depth and distance um, for example if I paint a distant mountain range like the uh, the light blue purple color mountain range you see here in the distance sometimes I use my fingers to smudge and blur blur the shapes out so they don't appear too detailed or too symmetrical and I would also suggest that you paint the distant mountains or whatever it may be in the distance using lighter values and contrast with cooler colors in the distance and as you move forward into the foreground try to use warmer and darker colors and that will help you achieve a realistic sense of distance in your paintings landscape paintings so um, again here I'm just using my palette knife and I'm just adding some uh, some mid-tone color uh, highlights to it I don't use really bright colors at this point I usually save that for the very last and um, so here I'm just uh, using a small palette knife and now I start to add the shadows and darker colors and not thinking too much about how this rock formation is is uh, going to actually look I'm just like I said blocking in color and as I move along um, I use reference photos uh, for this particular piece I've had I don't know I've probably looked at you know 20 or more photographs of you know mountain ranges in the southwest out in Utah and Arizona and I don't use any particular reference for most of my paintings unless it's a commission painting um, I'll use a combination of various photographs or or whatever and I try not to focus too much on you know duplicating a certain photograph I just use that for an idea and as I start to paint I'll most times put the photograph away and just use what I remember about the various photographs to, to use for the painting so uh, some more dark colors here some more shadows and in just a second I'll start to think about individual rock formations um, a little more highlight there and 
these areas are where it, it's going to be the main focal point on this painting. It's where I want the viewer's eye to uh, to focus on the most. Um, so, and again, it, it's personal preference. Uh, when painting, I use a lot of knives, palette knives. Um, when I paint, uh, s some people prefer brushes. I use both, uh, but when painting, you know, texture or on a textured panel, I pr much prefer to use palette knives because it gives it more of a realistic effect. Up close, it looks, you know, like a random mess, but when you look at it, you know, from a distance, from a few feet away, it looks uh, pretty realistic, and that's usually what I try to go for. So, uh, as you can see, there's uh, some more individual rocks in the foreground here as I move forward and progress into this painting. And, uh, yeah, so, um, random, uh, random fact I thought I would just throw out here while I continue to work on this this mountain here. I've oft, often wondered why the rock formations in the southwest appear to be red in color and uh, found the answer on Google and uh, basically it states that the red brown color um, and you know it's commonly found throughout the southwest parts in the United States um, this reddish color appears to be red as a result from oxidized iron that's within the rock. And this is most common in sediments that are uh, deposited in a seasonally hot and dry climate on land where the iron could be exposed to the air. And I never knew that until I started to make this video and I was just curious. Um, I've never had the opportunity to visit any of these places in the southwest part of the United States, but I've always wanted to go, and hopefully one day soon I will have that opportunity. I've been to uh, various other parts of the country um, and all over the world, but for some reason just have not had a chance to make it out to the southwest. I, I would love to see... Uh, you know, some of these places out in Arizona, Arizona and Utah, uh, take a visit to the Grand Canyon. And uh, my apologies, by the way, in this video, if you hear random background noise, I'm actually recording from my laptop. At this point, I don't have a microphone to record from, so if the sound quality is really bad, I apologize. And for the background noise, I'm in my bedroom right now and my two dogs are sound asleep it's uh, <laughs> 2.45 in the morning and uh, so if you hear any snoring or anything that's that's what it is now the most important part in painting is to take frequent breaks or else you will drive yourself crazy sitting there looking at a canvas for two hours. So cheers. Oh no. I spilled it everywhere. <laughs> Actually, there's something I do. I don't always do this, but if I spend a lot of time on a painting for, well, let's say more than a couple of hours at a time, I find it really helpful if I stand up, stretch around a little bit, and take a, a, a picture of the painting from my phone. And as I go on a coffee break, um, go outside, I'll look at that picture on the phone. And sometimes from, from a different perspective, you'll notice things that you don't notice as you're painting, uh, you know, on, as you're looking at the painting, as you're painting it. Um, it's, there's, 
I've actually heard of other artists doing this too and it's really helpful you can um, I'm not sure why you notice these things I think it's probably because you know you're just sitting there for so long you know getting so focused in on the painting um, and until you take a break and look at it um, from a picture or from a distance you'll you'll notice things that you need to change or add to this the, the painting and again I'm making I'm trying to finish these rock formations here um, this is the majority amount of time I've spent on this painting has been on this main rock formation because as I said earlier this is the main focal point so I put a little more um, of a purple color uh, a mixed uh, I think it was burnt sienna and crimson and I keep making it darker to the far left of the the painting where the shadows are and um, actually using my brush here to soften out the the base of it to create some more the, the illusion of distance and um, back to the palette knife making it darker and I pretty much go back and forth between dark and mid-tones at this point and I will at the very last I'll, I'll put the brightest brightest whites or orange red colors on the rock formations but for now I'm just making it pretty dark here on the far left um, another really cool thing I've noticed you know when studying these rock formations is the fact that there's there's a lot of horizontal um, like it's almost like shelves in, in these rock formations and uh, if you'll notice about about halfway up on this particular rock there's a uh, there's a horizontal line that I made with my palette knife with the shadow under it and uh, it's actually what I'm doing here too is making the horizontal lines to go directly across the rocks and I'm starting to think a little more about detail and structure um, fast forward just a bit I had to go on another coffee break there and uh, so the rocks you know to me looking pretty good at this point in my opinion uh, I think I'll probably go back and add to it later some more highlights and some finishing touches but for now I've I'm, I'm using a, a green mixture that I made from ultramarine blue and a little bit of burn umber and just a little touch of yellow ochre I think it's what I used and um, it's more of a blue a dark blue green than a, a yellow green um, and I'm using just a uh, sorry uh, I'm sorry sorry you're one of my dog just dogs just sneezed there I apologize for that like I said it's uh it's pretty hard working with these two guys sometimes <laughs> so so my apologies for that but uh but they are uh, they are my best buddies and they're with me when I paint a lot they stay with me and and uh, just lay around the house mostly but they definitely get their exercise that's for sure and that's also a good break if I get if I'm at staring at the painting for too long take a coffee break take the dogs for a walk come back to it and I'll notice things that you know really need changing or 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 not uh, you know, just uh, it's just good to take those breaks but here I'm adding the um, like some of the the dirt in the foreground and thinking about where the uh, the Sun's going to hit I'm adding some highlights with the palette knife and I'm just kind of smudging in color here I can always go back later with a brush and, and add more detail but the main you know like I did earlier the main thing in the 
just like the background and the foreground is just to you know block in some some basic colors and um, don't really be focused on any kind of form or shape at this point um, just some dark greens and and uh, just kind of quickly go back and forth with the palette knife and, and see what the paint does um, don't really think about it too much just kind of smudge some paint on there and uh, but do you know keep in mind try to think about I guess at this point where where the dark colors of these grasses are going to be and where the Sun is going to actually be hitting and you can judge that by looking at the main rock formation and kind of get an idea of where the Sun's going to be um, touching down on these places and right here thinking about making some a few cactus some more dirt right here and adding some light lighter green color for for the highlights so it's starting to shape up you know uh, like I said I'm not using any particular photograph or anything but I do have an idea of in my mind how how I want it to work are you okay Scarlett <laughs> okay Scarlett's my other dog. She's my brown retriever mix. She's a mix between a German short air pointer and a, a chocolate lab. And um, here, just again softening the edges at the base of the mountain uh, to create more more distance and atmosphere. And um, you know, back to the photographs. So when studying some of these, I noticed that the grasses that go far into the background often times they appear instead of a, a, a green color they're, they're almost like a bluish like a light blue color and that's exactly what I'm doing right here with my palette knife I'm just putting on a mix between ultramarine blue and titanium white and um, I'm just kind of gently grazing over the green color that I added on there because like I said I went back at a few more photographs and noticed hey it actually appears more blue for some strange reason and that's that's just the illusion of, uh, of distance in the painting and uh, in the southwest there is uh, a lot of distance so I'm softening the the background mountain here now before we continue I want to show you what I was talking about earlier about texturing the panel this is what's actually been varnished and the lighting is really bad in here but if you look really close up let me try to turn it just enough so you can see the little cracks and textures that I was talking about earlier so when you look at it really close, you can see those really interesting effects. And that's, uh, that's the result from texturing the, <coughs> excuse me, texturing the hardboard. So, uh, you know, really close you can see these things. And at a distance, um, you don't really notice. But I just think it gives it a cool effect. I'll show you another one here. If I don't trip over Scrappy, is that all you do is sleep? All you do is sleep. <laughs> okay. So here's another one. Uh, this is a small five by seven I did, and again from a distance, it, it's you know it's a nocturne that I painted from a imagination, but when you look at it really close, you can see those little. You know, textured marks and that's there we go it's a better shot there's a glare on it but that's the uh, that's the result from you know applying the gesso in a couple of layers with a brush and lightly sanding it and then 
going back over it with a palette knife. Like I said, you just dip the palette knife in it and into the gesso and just put it on there thick like you're icing your cake. So uh, we'll get started again and uh, let Mr. Scrappy sleep here. <laughs> Alright, see you back in the studio. So we're back in the studio now and I continue to put some highlights on this rock formation using the, the same palette knife that I was using earlier. And again, I'm, I'm going between dark and, and light and uh, slowly but surely I'm starting to make the, the highlights brighter and brighter. And, um, and the rock formation is almost complete. Here I'm putting some more horizontal lines in it that you often see in these formations. And uh, I guess it's time for me to uh, tell you a little bit about myself as an artist. Um, I'd actually, I've only been painting um, in the technique that I, I'm using now for about five years. I was, uh, when I was younger, I, I used to draw as a kid in elementary school and started painting a little bit in oils when I was about 13, 14 years old and um, painted for a year or two just uh, to try it and um, kind of lost interest and became interested in music. I played guitar and uh, we uh, started a band in high school and I, I kind of lost interest in, in the, uh, the visual arts until about five years ago um, well, six years ago, I was going through a really, really difficult time in my life, and um, uh, I'd uh, actually lost the best job I, I ever had, and I had to, uh, I had to immerse myself in something um, to to get my as, as a distraction to get my mind off some of the uh, the hardships that I was facing at the time. So um, I can't exactly remember who or what got me started back into the, the visual arts. Um, but I'd started studying a lot of the, the techniques from the, uh, the early masters, uh, especially in the 19th century, uh, some of the uh, American and Russian artists. And um, just started reading more and more about uh, their, their techniques, how they used to paint, and you know, stuff looking at their photographs of, of some of these paintings that they had done. Um, and within the past five years, I've just uh, you know, watched a lot of videos, e even here on YouTube. Uh, there's been some really helpful videos that has uh, kind of helped me get started. Um, what was once a hobby is now actually. Um, what I do pretty much full time. I'm also a, a web developer. That's uh, actually what I went to school for and a graphic designer. Um, but again, after school I had a hard time finding work in the area that I live here in East Tennessee. Um, so I just uh, continue to paint and um, and research and learn as much about it as I possibly could. And uh, I think in a lot of ways that's, uh, that's you know, that's helped me to, uh, to become, you know, better as an artist and as a person. And sometimes when we, uh, we face these hard times, we, uh, we're forced to, uh, you know, try something different, step out on a limb and uh, just uh, just go for it and I, I really enjoy doing this and um, you know helping other people uh, especially artists who are just starting up starting out and um, again if you uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this if you have any questions if you're just starting to paint in oils um, feel free to leave a comment below or email me um, at rcheron 
That's R-C-H-E-R-R-I-N at gmail.com. And um, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. Uh, I've, I've been fortunate. I've had a lot of, you know, artists, well-known artists even, who have helped me, um, you know, whenever I've had a question or um, wanted to learn more, more about how they achieve the techniques that, that, they, that they do. Um, so yeah, feel free to contact me anytime and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to help in any way I can. Um, but you know, um, I've learned, you know, in art and just like with anything else in life, um, you know, if there's something that you want to do, which I, I wanted to paint, I really, like I said, I immersed myself in it and just really enjoy it but if there's something you want to do and just because you don't know how to do it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't learn um, and you you don't have to be great uh, to get started but you do have to get started to become great and um, um, by no means the greatest of artists but uh, <laughs> you know I'm uh, I'm trying every day I'm practicing I'm studying and um, I've had people ask me, well, Ryan, you know, uh, why don't you paint more often? You know, you, you, you haven't posted anything on social media in a while. I haven't seen any of your artwork. Well, there's, uh, you know, for me, learning and um, d trying to grow as an artist is more than just, you know, sitting here having a good time with a paintbrush in hand. You know, um, it's it's there's a lot of uh, study in it and and practice and um, just like anything else, the more you practice, the better you become. Um, you will fail many times uh, in art and in life, but uh, you know you just have to keep moving on put one foot in front of the other and keep trying do not get discouraged uh, I used to get really frustrated whenever I would destroy a painting and um, you know think it was the end of the world but and just think of it like this you know it's just paint it's just uh, it's just paint and hardboard and canvas and you can always paint over it or um, or you know use it as a uh, as a palette if you if you have a destroyed painting um, never toss it in the trash like I used to do out of frustration um, but you know it takes these uh, uh, failed paintings I guess you could say to uh, to practice and uh, and to get better so but what I've uh, actually been doing is, you know, working on the foreground and the grass, and I continue to make uh, the illusion of, you know, the cactus in the foreground, and I'm putting some highlights on it where the sun will hit. Using my palette knife, I'm just gently grazing right over those dark areas that you see. Um, and one thing I've learned, you know, uh, especially with you know landscape painting the contrast you know the the darker the darks the uh, the brighter the brights my goodness scrappy why is it that I always have to do the work and you and Scarlett just take naps all day while daddy paints Sawyer I have to start back We've had long enough of a break. Oh, I wish I had the life of a dog sometimes. Uh, these guys live a five-star life here, uh, here at my place. So, uh, um, here I'm using a, uh, a Q-tip. If you remember me talking about the wipe-away method earlier, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just simply wiping away areas of paint where I want that underpainting to show through. Um, 
and that actually gives the illusion of, of uh, brighter highlights. Um, and uh, you don't have to apply paint to achieve that. You can just simply remove paint. And like right here, I'm using the Q-tip to make a little sunspot shining right through the, the grass there. And um, it's really an effective way to, uh, to achieve highlights without adding more paint. I'm using a small brush here to add some more detail to the foreground, to the cactus. And I'm gently blending the, the bottom part of it out just to make it appear more, uh, more hazy and, and blurred. And uh, like I said, I even use my fingers to, to smudge and, and blend out some of these areas. Uh, nothing has to be perfect. Now here I, I continue to uh, use my finger to smudge out the base of those uh, patches of grass. And that kind of gives the illusion of shadow um, and that the grass is actually growing into the sand areas. And with my palette knife I add more sand and more highlight to the foreground area and that bright color sand um, gives the illusion that, that the sun is hitting in that specific area and that also makes the cactus in the foreground appear darker which as I mentioned earlier gives that illusion of depth and distance in your painting so pretty much for the rest of this painting um, I continue to work on the foreground and the, the sand areas and I'm going between dark and light adding more shadow and and sunspots um, but like I said earlier um, the main focus on this painting is is the giant rock formation um, which is you know to the far left as a general rule of thumb um, artist tip I guess you could say when you're uh, doing a landscape painting try not to uh, put even though something's uh, the main focal point in the painting try not to place it dead center um, it's 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 really uh, not what you would see in in nature if you're you know walking through the desert or, or whatever um, oftentimes you're it, it, especially starting off you have that tendency to uh, to want to make things right in the center of the, the canvas or panel and um, and that's the focal point um, but in nature like I said earlier nothing is, is symmetrical um, symmetry in art for me is rather annoying and I try to uh, try to avoid it if at all possible so that's why I place that rock to the uh, to the far left of the painting and it kind of leads the eye um, in that direction when you look at the painting and um, again just back and forth between dark and light adding adding some even brighter highlights to these these grassy areas here with the, my palette knife and um, when adding these highlights don't you don't have to press you know firmly with the knife you just barely barely graze over it in random directions and it gives that illusion of so as I finish this painting individual the sun starts grass, to rise here in East Tennessee I want to thank you all so much again for watching and uh, don't forget to click that thumbs up button and subscribe if you enjoyed it and I really look forward to seeing you all again soon and until then you uh, take care of yourselves and God bless you all